Oh, hello. Welcome to Chris and Scott's Colorado Adventures. It's the story time edition. And tonight, I'm gonna read you a story. And tonight's story is Yellow Submarine by the Beatles. Based on the 1968 movie of the same name. Alright, shall we start? Once upon a time, or maybe twice, there was an unearthly paradise called Pepperland. Pepperland, 80,000 leagues beneath the sea it lay, or lies, I'm not too sure. A winterless wonderland, where song and laughter rode on the breeze, and where you never felt lonely because Sergeant Pepper's band was always playing your song. There's the band. You know, the people from Pepperland. But if, like the Chief Blue Meanie, you didn't have a song and you hated music, then you might have wanted to sneeze Pepperland away forever. The chief inspected the meanie army. Are my troops in readiness? Ready, your blueness, Max said furiously. The troops stood to attention. The apple bonkers, the snapping turks, the four-headed bulldogs, and the dreadful flying glove. Splendid, the chief's big teeth gnashed. Today, Pepperland goes bluey. Here's all our blue meanies. Captain Fred ran for his life as the crowd scattered. The meanies are coming! The meanies are coming! Those who dared to stay were beaten blue and blue by the glove or frozen like colorless statues. The chief blue meanie gloated. If music be the food of glove, play on! And the air turned blue with his laughter. Only Fred and the old Lord Mayor escaped. Hurry, young Fred, wheezed the Lord Mayor. Eventually, they reached the great gray pyramid that marked the edge of Pepperland. At the top, a stubborn streak of orchard stained the sky, a yellow submarine. Our music is fading, young Fred, the mayor began. Pepperland is dying. But Lord Mayor, there must be something I can do. There is, he whispered. Climb aboard the submarine and get help. You're the only one of us left who can carry the tune. Fred climbed in and set sail. Eight days and 80,000 leagues later, the Yellow Submarine surfaced in Liverpool. In Hope Street, Ringo felt hopeless. Liverpool can be a lonely place on a Saturday night, he mused, and this is only Thursday morning. Nothing ever happens to me. Like a goldfish in a murky puddle, the submarine followed him home. Captain Fred hammered on the door. Help! I really need somebody! Help! Thanks, we don't need any, said Ringo. H is for hurry, E is for urgent, L is for love me do, and P is for please, please help me, pleaded Fred. Ringo creaked open the door. The story has touched me hard. Come in. Bless you. Can I sneeze? Ringo smiled. Ringo led Fred into a gallery. I'm sure we can work it out with a little help of my friends. They bumped into Frankenstein. Frankenstein's a friend of yours? Fred asked. Oh yeah, I used to go out with his sister, Phyllis. The monster unbolted himself into John. Then they found George and Paul. Hey John, hey Paul, hey George, called Ringo. Listen to old Fred. Music, Lord Mayor, submarine, explosions, blue meanies, he gabbled. What do you think, said Ringo. I think, said John, he needs a rehearsal. There's John turning from Frankenstein into John. And there's the Beatles. Fred welcomed them aboard. 
Right then, let's get this vessel ship shape. I kind of like it the way it is, said John. Submarine shape. Do we need a ticket to ride? asked George. Only if we're taking the mystery tour, Ringo joked. How do you start it? Paul asked. With a key, said Ringo. Give us an A, Paul. And where's the handbrake then? Perhaps this is it, Ringo said. I'm a born Liverpool in me. The motors gurgled into life. Then the propellers, turning at a steady 33 and third RPM, hummed and drummed their goodbye to Liverpool. And the little submarine dived deep below the waves. Time stood still for a moment. The clocks were striking for shorter hours. They drifted into a monstrous sea, a sea of monsters. John gazed out the portal. There's a school of whales. They look a bit old for school, George said. University, then. University of Wales, said John. Teapots poured out their lovely hearts to the soulful sound of an ice cream cornet. Kinky boot beasts danced and kicked a little submarine all over the seabed. Until see all the sea of monsters. Let's see here. You can see it. Yeah. Kinky boot beast. Right there. A riptide sent them spiraling off course. It was the hideous sycophant, vacuuming everything up in its path. It's the dreaded vacuum flask, said George. What should we do? Have a nice cup of tea, John said. So long, sucker. But they were gone, swallowed into his monstrous belly of oblivion. Monstrous sucker sucking it in. It was an inside-outside world that greeted him. A nowhere land, empty save for a curious creature dancing and singing a jig with no tune. Ad hoc, ad lock, and quid pro quo. So little time, so much to know. George looked on. He must be the nowhere man. The low man passed Ringo a card. Jeremy Hillary Boo. Fud. Eminent classicist. Botanist. Satirist part-time firefighter, and paperback writer. A real man of letters, huh? Ringo smiled. Why don't you come back with us, Mr. Boo? You mean, you take a nowhere man? Yeah, come on, we'll take you somewhere. Where are we, Paul asked. It looks like a sea of holes. Or a holy sea, George quipped. Where's the exit gone? Let's get searching, fellas, Paul took charge. Look for a hole that says, way out, man. There's a hole in your pocket, Ringo puzzled. Maybe that's the way out. They are the sea of holes. Ringo's about to take his hole in the pocket. Only one hole led to Pepperland, and th through it came a blue meanie. Jeremy Hillary Boo had been kidnapped. Hey, where's the booby gone? Ringo pined. Well, I fell into a booby trap, Paul joked. You mean like this one? Ah! And the others followed Ringo, plummeting into the darkness. So this is Pepperland, John was unimpressed. It's a little dingy. It makes me want to sing the blues, said Paul. All right, said John, let's sing. The Lord Mayor stirred. Do I hear music? Do I see young Fred? The old man's heart beat stronger with every bar. And who are these familiar faces? You're the spitting image of Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. You could impersonate them and lead a rebellion. As the night crept in, the lads, quiet as cats, paused, crept out to Sergeant Pepper's bandstand, picking a path between the clumps of snoring blue knees. Look, I found their uniforms, John whispered. George was impressed. Hey, nice view of gear, that. Let's get some kept, fellas, Paul yawned. Tomorrow we're going to meet those meanies look teeny weeny. There they are, in the bandstand, getting out the Sergeant Pepper uniforms. They got dressed and set off just as day broke. Instruments ready? asked John. One, two, three. The brass sparkled and announced the opening bars of the familiar anthem. 
Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band was back, and one by one, the Peppermint Landers returned to life and color. The Blue Meanies held out their hands to their ears and wailed and gnashed their terrible teeth. Who is responsible for this? screamed the Chief Blue Meanie. Squash them, crush them, oh blue to rate them. The dreadful gloves snarled in the battle. All you need is love. Love, said John. Sergeant Pepper's band changed the tune. All you need is love. Filled the air and made it sweet again. Love, 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 sang John. All you need is love. And the gloves, filled with lovely love and happiness, flew away. The Blue Meanies were on the run now, tumbling over the hills to the five corners of the earth. You're attacking the wrong way, raged their chief. Retreat! Backwards! This four-headed bulldog headed in four different directions. The war was over. I'm going to blue pencil you forever, the great indigo puffball threatened Jeremy. Peace, peace, supplant the gloom, Jeremy replied in verse. Turn off what is sour, turn into a flower, and bloom, bloom! Bloom! Spellbound, the chief blue meanie was left in a rash of rosebuds. The first time I saw that nobody, said Ringo proudly, I knew he was somebody. There he is, the chief blue meanie getting all his rosebuds. Here's Jeremy. Hey, blue people, John called. Won't you join us? The chief blue meanie wept huge blue tears. It's no longer a blue world, Max, he sobbed, his nose flowering larger than ever. Maybe you're blue, miss, Max smiled, but the bluebird of happiness will always be ours. Are you with us? John called again. Why not mix? Hook up, mingle. What do you say, shall we mix, Max? Oh yes, your newness. And for the first time in their existence, their mean, unhappy lives became happy and meaningful because of one simple phrase. There's the blue meanies becoming happy, Max and the chief. All you need is love. The end. All right. Thanks for joining me for story time. Chris and Scott's Colorado Adventures. I know I enjoyed traveling to the world of Pepperland through the Sea of Monsters. It's a lot of fun. Alright, if you haven't, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give us the big thumbs up. And we'll see you next time on Chris and Scott's Colorado Adventures.